I mean, I, I want everyone to really fully understand that nothing changes for the company, just the share price and then the amount of shares outstanding change. But, you know, it is a way to kind of artificially keep your price up. And it does give buyers of options. I mean, it makes options a little bit cheaper. So, you know, you don't have to, you know, someone, you remember, you, you can't buy partial options. You can buy partial shares, but I don't believe you can buy partial options. So, so for a lot of investors that like to play options, they're just not able to play Amazon prior to the split. So I understand it getting a little bit of, of the upside. You know, to me, I look at the chart and, and it doesn't, it still hasn't corrected enough to make me feel comfortable. You can see that you're now trading kind of in this range where if you connect these lows, you're just kind of dangling right around this breakdown point. And that's what you don't want to see. You don't want to see this really break lower. If it does break lower, I think you're probably headed down towards the 2000 level on the chart. But yeah, interesting news. I mean, we've seen Google announce it. Apple did one not too long ago. Um, obviously, Tesla was a big one. But remember, Tesla did it during a bull market. So it just got amazing price action. You're now in a different environment where I wouldn't expect the bullishness to last quite as long. You know, a lot of companies will use it to kind of generate that that pop in the stock that they want to get. Um, so I think there's I, there's the new CEO at Amazon. You know, he probably wants to keep the stock somewhat up um, while he's trying to make new initiatives and do things like that. So I'm perfect example. And again, I understand it. You know, maybe Amazon is saying, hey, listen, could we get in the Dow Jones Industrial Average, right? I mean, Amazon is the biggest retailer in the US. So you there's no way they would ever put Amazon in at $3,000 a share into the Dow because it would literally dwarf every other company in the Dow, right? And that's what that's what Apple did, right? Apple did the split and then they were able to get in. So maybe that's the angle here too, is, is maybe they're thinking, all right, well, we should be in the Dow. We should be in that index. And this is one way to kind of make open the door. You know, you're right on this major trend line. Let me show you this because this is really, I mean, this trend line we hit just uh, maybe two weeks ago right here and you had the big reversal this was when the invasion first took place now you're back into that line again and you have to say that the more times you hit a level the more likely you break and again i use i love the analogy of like you know if if, if you're on one side of the door and it's locked um, and you need to save someone on the other side, you may run against that door as hard as you can. Probably the first, second time, maybe it doesn't break down. If you keep hitting that door with all your might, eventually it breaks down, right? It's just a matter of how many times. So essentially this trend line is a door and you've now hit it very many times and most recently just about two weeks ago. So there is real risk that, that Apple could now be the next one to see a big decline. And, and hedge fund managers and institutions are so over exposed to Apple because it's been a darling for so long that really that could be a major collapse play where you could see it take down the markets overall, especially with the size of that company. Yeah. So, I mean, the markets are still kind of watching every headline coming out from, from Russia and Ukraine, right? Friday, we saw that gap up initially, or I think it was Friday. Um, and, and the markets had gapped up after supposedly Putin had said something positive about maybe negotiations. And then I think it was very interesting to see how the market after just a little bit, I mean, very limited upside, um, it opened up and then right away started to sell as people said, listen, you know, this guy isn't some guy that you can trust in what he says, and there's no troop movements to, to signal any pullback. They were still bombing, you know, the crazy amounts there in Ukraine. So, so the market really sold very sharply, closed at the lows of the day, which is not unusual for a Friday when there's the markets are closed for two straight days. So people don't want to be buying into Friday when you have a war that could, I mean, you know, God forbid, could escalate and draw in more countries or NATO. I mean, there's just there's just so many risks right now that it makes it very tough to be someone who's just accumulating. I vividly remember how many, I mean, you know, in the last prior to this year, 2022, but, you know, going back to 20, late 2020 and 2021, I mean, there would be news that would hit that you'd be like, you know, that's not good news. And then the markets would sell for like an hour and then boom, off to the races, they would go. And you're right, way different market environment. The psychology of the market is 100%. I think it makes sense um, considering that if you look at the percentages, the NASDAQ was the one that had the biggest gains during COVID especially. So it makes sense that that one would be falling the hardest. I mean, there are stocks getting, I mean, you know, I've been accumulating, you know, last week I really did take, take some initiative and start accumulating plays, you know, Zoom. Um, I mean, some of these charts are just getting to the level and listen, in bear markets, notoriously, things go lower than you would think. I mean, you know, but when you look at a chart like Zoom, and I'll throw it up here on, on for everyone to see, I mean, you're now getting to points where you can kind of make a case 
that it is at a valuation level. So for me, like I love looking back on charts and seeing that price is trading into where it was at a prior point before all this publicity, right? So during COVID, Zoom became a household name and you're now trading at levels that were prior. So here's your March, you know, here's 2020, right? Right there. That's when COVID hit. And this is when it obviously took off. You're now trading back to levels where it wasn't a household name, yet it is still a household name. So, you know, granted, could you overshoot this level? Yeah, of course. But ultimately, I think at these levels, it starts to make sense to nibble on some technical trading levels here on good quality names. I wouldn't go to kind of the, the small cap route where they still don't have the earnings behind it. But Zoom, I think, is trading around a 20, 22 PE which again is not horrendous now. I mean, when it was at 100, that was ridiculous. But at 20 to 22, you can kind of make sense of that. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3,000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn $500,000, $1 million, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke. And you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where do you start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them and if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange and one of the biggest are for example Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well established exchanges but, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much, much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof. To the moon, so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.